If you visit Newcastle often or you live here, you come to notice one thing about the city, and that is the lack of public toilets. If you're in the city centre you need to go, you have to venture to one of the malls or shopping centres or bars and restaurants to use a toilet. But has it always been this bad? Or was there a time when Newcastle was actually good at providing toilets for its public? Let's compare the number of toilets in Newcastle in 1894 versus 2023. So where did all these toilets come from? And then where did they go? There were three main reasons for providing toilets within the city. The first reason was shopping and markets. Historically, there was cattle markets in the city centre, and that meant people from County Durham and Northumberland brought their livestock into the city centre in order to sell this. The cattle market itself had a three-seat privy, and the fish market had a four-seat privy, with privy meaning a room with a sink and a toilet. With the decline of cattle markets and similar markets from the city centre, other things stepped up to play the role, and that was shopping centres. Eldon Square, Eldon Garden, as well as venues such as Monument Mall, all provided toilets for shoppers to use to encourage them to stay for longer. The second reason for providing toilets in the city was for work, with cabman shelters providing toilets where taxi drivers were able to use facilities whilst waiting for the next passenger, as well as public toilets provided down places such as the quayside for the dock workers to use. Whilst there was a lot of public toilets during this period, there was also a third reason that more public toilets were provided, and that was gender. A local report highlighted in 1964 that there were 63 male toilets in the city compared to only 24 female toilets. This coins the term the urinary leash. The urinary leash refers to the lack of public toilets available for women in an effort to keep them home and this was aimed at restricting their freedoms. The reason for including more women's toilets was to encourage them to shop and spend more time in the city centre and therefore spend more money. This meant throughout the 1900s, the amount of public toilets for women actually increased massively. However, there were still more public toilets for men than there were for women. The architecture of public toilets is another way to understand their importance and significance, with the original designs of public toilets being very rudimentary in style and design whereas throughout the Victorian period, the elegance and the beauty of these was increased massively. Take, for example, the men's toilets in Big Market. This, when it opened, was quite an iconic design with a glass atrium built below the street. So, where did all these public toilets go? In the 1960s, there were around 80 public toilets in the city centre for both men and women. Around 50 of these were built before 1910, which shows the age of a lot of these. What was the actual reason for the decline? As with the growing commercialism and the opening of shopping centres such as Eldon Square, a lot of these shops and places actually had their own toilets. Therefore, the need for wider public toilets elsewhere was not as great. A key part of this as well is the broader shift to neoliberal politics. Had not been privatised, they would have gone on putting their hands in the pockets of the British taxpayer indefinitely. And this meant that less money was being given to local authorities, and therefore the pot of money to actually run essential services were getting reduced and reduced. Therefore cutbacks were made in anything that was deemed as not essential. And now it was taken at this time that public toilets were expensive to run, and therefore they were cut. A report at the time stated, whilst the number of public conveniences will be cut, there's a greater amount of private institutions such as shops, etc., which are now providing the toilets, and therefore the council's need to provide so many is not as great. This brings us on to uh, an issue we still see today, which is a lot of the toilets provided in these private venues really require you to spend money in order to use them. This therefore discourages people from actually using these facilities. However, the real decline is seen from 1960, where 86 public toilets was reduced to virtually zero in the city centre. And this again falls down to local council funding being cut further and further, with central government giving local councils no direct budget now. This means public toilets are something that really cannot be sustained by many local authorities. With the requirement of shops to provide these facilities and private institutions, there then comes an issue of 
when these shops close at around 5pm, where do the people in the city centre then use to go to the toilet? Another reason for this is anti-homeless attitudes, the idea of taking away these public services in order to create hostile environment to discourage homeless from congregating in city centres. The COVID pandemic saw a further reduction in the ability for the public to use these private shops, toilets, with many of these being closed during lockdown. And this really exacerbated the issue which had been running for a long time up till then. However, there was one other reason for the decline in public toilets in some areas, and that was the advent of indoor plumbing. What indoor plumbing allowed was every household to have its own toilet and residential areas such as Heaton, Jesmond and Biker no longer needed public toilets within these residential areas to share as each house would then have its own toilet. So what happened to some of these former public toilets and what is the state of them now? The probably most iconic one is the men's toilets in Big Market. This is the one I mentioned previously with the glass atrium. This has now been converted into a gin and wine bar which sits beneath the road. But this demonstrates a, a selling off of these formerly public assets. In spitting distance of the men's toilets was the female toilets. These are actually located on Highbridge Street. This uh, small doorway which looks innocuous at first previously provided the women's toilets. This again has now been converted into a gin bar stroke wine bar owned by the same company as the men's toilets. There was also previously public toilets on 4th Street which is located behind Newcastle Central Station. This one was boarded up and still apparently remains behind this uh, boarded up doorway. The other notable one is Doric House and this was formerly a shop which had public toilets facilities in the ground floor. Doric House was demolished in the 1960s and replaced by a pocket park with benches. This has then further been privatised by the Emperor's Bar, which has then taken this pocket park and converted into a private beer garden. So, after all this, what is the actual future of Newcastle's public toilets? And is there any hope of this situation getting better? So Newcastle has just won levelling up funding to install two new public toilets, one at the Civic Centre and the other at Northern Stage. However, this shows how deeply rooted the issue of funding is. If central government funding has to be bidded for in order for a council to install public toilets within their own city, it really shows that the council is unable to provide its own services. And again, this exacerbates the issue of when these venues close, where do people in the city use public toilets?